These little sheets of paper, let me tell you, one day they're going to be worth tens of cents. One day they'll go in the, the Jewsonium. No, it's a Jewish Smithsonian. Oh. The Jewsonium. That's a thing. Okay. It's not a thing. Today we're going to be talking about loose brush hairs in your paint. Now why is this a problem? Because when you try to fish it out, you can ruin your work. But there are a few little strategies and tricks I thought I'd share with you. When your brush loses its hair, it's age-related hair loss, but not in the way you think. Now, if you don't take care of your brush, age-related hair loss will happen. If you don't clean it and dry it properly, it will, you know, slowly die on you. But most of the time, it's more like a Benjamin Button situation. It's the younger hair that falls out, not the older hair. It really doesn't matter too much on the quality of the brush. Uh, it could be, you know, a dirt cheap brush or one of the top of the line brushes, hair loss happens. When you lose a brush hair in your watercolor painting, the best thing to do is just leave it. Once it dries, it probably will blow right off, fall right off. Now, if you're working in oil or acrylic, you want to make sure that you use tweezers to delicately lift out any loose brush hairs. But the biggest thing that I can share is hair loss prevention in your paint. There's this misconception that your brushes are ready to go as soon as you buy them. It's not true. Will, it's not true. Your brushes need a little bit of prep before you can get in the paint. Generally, synthetic hair brushes do a pretty good job in terms of not losing their hair. You might still get a few loose hairs if they're lower quality brushes, but uh, they usually do a good job. But between natural hair brushes, you've got hog's hair, you've got squirrel hair, you've got Kalinsky hair, you've got all kinds of hair, and they all can get loose. So you want to take care of it before you start painting. Now I got a new brush here. Okay. So this is a, this is a high-end brush. This is the Imperial bristle brush. Okay. This is a, a top of the line bristle brush we carry here at Jerry's. Okay. You think it's ready to go. Look how stiff that is. You know, when it's stiff, you think, okay, it's, it's uh, it's ready to go, but uh, that's not the case. You got to get it warmed up. You got to get it ready to go and you don't want it this stiff. You, you want to work it out. Why is your brush stiff? Okay. Why are your brushes stiff at all, especially in the mornings? Uh, I'll tell you why my brushes are stiffest in the mornings. Where'd you go? Because when we restock at night, okay, we put out new brushes in our stores, and then people come in, they see our, our giant rack, uh, giant beautiful rack of, of brushes, and then they, they just, I did it as a kid too, they just, they work it out. They, now do you see that? Are you seeing that, Ashley? Are you seeing the, the pixie dust? What is that? Okay, that is starch. Um, which is used to protect the brush in transit. And then throughout the day, and then throughout the day, and then throughout the day, people, you know, play with the bristles because it's just, I don't know, there's something just so, I don't know, it just feels good. You got to get the starch out and you got to soak it. So what you got to do is take your brush, okay? And I'm going to show you with this one real quick. And warm water generally, and don't soak it for a long time. In fact, I want you to stay and watch your brush. If you leave your brush soaking overnight or over a long period of time, water will get up through the ferrule into your wooden handle and it will split. If you want to know about how to take care of your brush, that's a whole separate video. That's a frequently asked artist question we did on how to take care of an oil paint brush. If you don't paint in oils, just basically remove the turpentine and the other rules pretty much remain, okay? Simple as that. So once you've let the brush soak for just a minute or two, okay, in warm water, you're gonna take it out and you're just going to start fishing, okay? You're going to be fishing for loose hairs. Okay, there we go. I don't know if we saw that. We got one little loose hair. Now, other brushes need extra protection, apparently. And you'll see they come with condoms. Uh, you take off the condom, okay? And again, this is a squirrel hair brush. You see how it's stiff, Ashley? Mm-hmm, okay. Again, I'm going to soak it. Now, it, it's in your nature, or my nature, I want to just jam it down and get the starch out. Especially with watercolor brushes, your sables, you know, your squirrel hair, your softer hairs. Just, you just want to be gentle. Just tap it. Listen. Is that gentle? And then let it sit there for a minute or two. Don't leave it. What will happen if you leave it, Olivia? It'll split. It'll split. That's right. It'll just pick up and leave. It will split the handle. So, okay, there we go. So you see how I just worked that out? This is not the sign okay, of, of a poor quality brush. And you just fish out these loose hairs. And you gotta do this before you start painting to save yourself a big headache because age-related hair loss is an epidemic in this country. Once you do this, you're done. Like, you know, then just 
you don't have to like do this every time you paint. It's just when you have a new brush. One of the things that I know that like I've seen people do, and I've actually done this myself, is they reuse the condom. The only reason to do this would be to make sure that your brushes, um, if you're gonna like transport them, if they're just sitting in a drawer or shelf, you don't just throw it away, don't hoard it. Very simply, you're gonna put it back on. So you wanna do it while the brush is still in its pointiest stage. You have to be very careful not to catch any of the hairs when you put it back on. And most of the time they won't, you can't take it up the rear because it will not fit through the girth. Okay, so right here I missed it. I thought I did a good job. So you see how there's some hair now sticking out? Even when you think that you're getting it on correctly, it might not be. So you want to be very careful because a lot of times you can ruin brushes because you were kind of careless putting the the protection back on. I'd like to know um, what are some of the things that you want to know about brushes, whether it's related to the brush hair loss or different types of brushes. Uh, put your questions below and maybe we'll do a video on that if it gets asked enough. Fix your brush, fix your starch, and then fix me on Instagram. I don't know what that means. At Mike Not Jerry, and uh, we'll have some more fun, you know? I, I always come up with something, don't I? Now it's like a personal mission, like I wanna make sure I can get it in. All right, so we're gonna thread the needle here, Ashley. You watching? Brush drop.